this project plot we'll call the meeting to order. Or, yeah, we'll call the meeting to order. Open meeting text posted on the wall as always. Uh, Lisa, you want to call the roll? Vance. Present. Brad. Yes. Sean. Here. Skyler. Here. Everybody's present and accounted for. Uh, could you join me in the pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, uh, move on to the consent agenda. Have minutes, claims, treasury report. Should have been in your packet. You have a chance to review them. You can pull anything out, back on, or act on them all with one motion. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Brad? Yes. Sean? Yes. Skyler? Aye. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. All right, Mayor's appointment report. Uh, don't have uh, any committee appointments to make this month, so that's a good one. <laughs> I actually, I don't think there's one till August to be the next one, but and I really don't have anything to report in terms of a mayor's report. I would. We've got three committees that need to get together: uh, the Three Rivers, the Board of Health, and the registration fees on vacant buildings. So before you leave tonight, I mean, we can do that after the meeting, but we need to find times when we can get those committees together and, and get those things moving. So keep that in mind. Don't be running out for supper as soon as we're done. Uh, no public hearings. Old business is a song to that uh, vacant building item. I don't think the committee has been able to meet, so I. I don't know if we need to table that again or if we can just skip over it. <laughs> I make a motion we table um, old business uh, ordinance 1542 vacant housing until after we get a chance, the committee gets a chance to meet. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Call goal. Sean? Aye. Skyler? Aye. Vance? Aye. Brad? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, we'll move on to the regular agenda. I'm going to not necessarily go by the order they're listed there tonight. We've got some folks that need to be other places. So we are going to jump down to consider the recommendation from the LB840 Loan Committee to approve application, consider approval of application number 21-03 for a business loan in the amount of two. $176,399.67. We have Jim Barnes here. Do you have something you want to present? <coughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily have anything in addition to the memorandum that I sent out uh, today, but um, I, I think, you know, the loan committee met, oh, it's been about a month ago, and reviewed the application. Um, and Everyone felt comfortable with it, so it was a unanimous decision to recommend approval. All right, anybody have questions or comments? All the paperwork is in order, and, and as far as meeting the different type criteria and stuff of our... Yeah, that, the application is, it's an eligible... Um, Business purpose I'm under the plan, and uh, you know we spent some time trying to determine exactly. There was um, some question on the loan terms, but I think we we uh, gotten to the bottom of that, and and that's what I had in the recommendation or in that memorandum tonight. So. And just for the council to know, too, the, all of the terms and the application they go to the. 
So we've already, already appointed the term that our signature. Yeah, she has reviewed it and approved the terms as they're written that they comply with the terms of policy. I'll make a motion to approve application 21-03 um, loan for an amount of $276,399.67 for uh, business financial. Second. Moved and second. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Skyler. Aye. Vance. Aye. Black. Yes. Sean. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. I think next we will move on. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Thank yeah, thank you. Thanks for the committee's work. You bet. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the uh, discuss and consider the commercial shares under the Sunwise Community Solar That's fine. I wasn't, you know, I just decided Lisa was, I call her, she's in a meeting, she calls me, I'm in a meeting, it was, and I thought, man, if they're having this meeting tonight, if there's any questions or things, it's just probably easier if I'm here, so I made it. Thank you. Appreciate it coming. <laughs> Absolutely. So the last time I was here, the one thing we were talking about is the fact that there are 224 solar shares for the community to have in total. And there are a couple of larger businesses in town, or even just any larger use customer, uh, a few of them could take all of your shares. You know, one business in particular could take all of them. And while that might be okay, because you know you're full up, it doesn't really spread the community like you indicated you really wanted. So one of the things that we can do, and we have done, is to limit uh, customers to 10 shares, or if, I mean, you can limit everybody to five. I mean, you really have the power to say what you want to do. Uh, one other thing to consider is if you have a, maybe business owners or, or people in town who own a lot of properties, if they are under, like Skylar Jones, and he owns 10 properties all under the name of Skylar Jones, that all adds up as well. So he could indeed qualify for more than 10 shares based on that usage. So it might be something where you wanna just limit everyone to 10 shares. The chances of a single residential customer qualifying for more than that are pretty slim anyway, but it's just something for you to consider, but for sure the non-residential folks uh, to limit them uh, to 10 shares or to whatever you guys think is a, is a good number. And with that consideration, I guess, once we know what your rules and parameters are, we can get going, schedule in the open house, and I can come up here with a laptop and uh, look up people's consumption when they show up, and we can get them signed up that night. So, and we'll see how we do. If we have a really successful open house, which I hope we do, we won't have to do the online thing where they're, you know, going on to ntbd.com, looking it up, and then having us call them back, and and doing all that. We'll have the solar agreements or the service agreements right here with us. We'll bill the, the fee right on their account. They won't have to worry about writing us a check that night or anything like that. Uh, the last date I got was maybe at the latest sometime in October for this to go live. And I'm looking at the fact that it's nearly mid-July thinking we probably want to get going. It's nice to know that we have a little bit of lead time to sell any shares. I just don't think we're going to have a problem though. But what uh, did you say is 10 about the average a residential customer would qualify for or less than that? Or? Well, in our examples, we use a, a, an average of 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. And with that, if they average 1,000 kilowatt hours a month, they could buy up to six solar shares because it would be 900 kWh. So they could buy six at that kind of an average. Now. People are very different. Some people average more than a thousand. Some people, you know, are real conservative, or they have a little house, or they, you know. So it, it's going to vary from person to person for sure. But we just use that as a nice even number. How how easy would is this to? If we set a limit on it, how easy would it be to adjust later 
say if we set a limit at 10 and there's still 100 shares on, unused, could we you know, raise the limit and talk to businesses that might want to buy more? Absolutely, absolutely. And that is the one thing I know the, I, I, I think I can give you a, like the mango and the first Scott's Bluff one we did, they limited it to 10 shares. And then with the stipulation that if they did not sell them all or subscribe them all, that they would open them back up to people who were interested. Okay. Was that like a 30 day sign up and then after that, or how did they? Uh... Well, I think we sort of looked at it from the time of go live. You know, if it was getting close to go live, and really because the city has to buy those extra shares, um, it's one of those things where it might be okay for you because, of course, this is going to be priced very well. It's going to be a nice credit for everybody. But, um, you could definitely say that if we're within 14 days or whatever and we are not fully subscribed, we will let you do this. But that might be, you know, that might be very dependent on our open house and any marketing we do ahead of it. Uh, I guess the way I look at it, say you open up to your average residential and at, we might, math works out to 37 customers with 224 shares remaining. I mean, I guess I would prefer to see the remaining shares go to things like the hospital, the school, the things that everyone's paying towards. That way it spreads, I mean, it's still a marginal benefit, but even for an individual customer, my, in your examples, if I remember right, I can't find the sheet that was coming out, I think last month it was maybe five bucks a month-ish credit on a bill. Is that about accurate? Yeah, with the six shares, it's, it's about a $5.31 yeah. credit. Mm -hmm. um, I just, the way I, and the fact that their shares aren't owned, actually, like we were initially thinking. So if those residents move, it's correct that they go back on the market then. And other, uh, if we get them to those entities that are tax funded, uh, I, yeah, it's marginal, but everyone's benefiting. County as well, where county was kind of a little bit involved, initially correct, where they either had the ground initially, and that is okay. Uh, and then we know those shares are going to stay with that. There's longevity there. There are entities they don't move or pass away. Right. Well, but if we have the residents that say move, get them back on the market, and then if somebody say moved to town and wanted a share of it to be open up to them, the resident would put them at the hospital, then you know that share would probably never come back open to them. Correct. If they continue to get that credit. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess I see that as a negative. We don't get the money. city practice. We want to get some money. You get the money. Well, the, the customer gets the benefit. We'll put it that way. <laughs> well, and yeah, I, I understand. As what does you MPP, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, as far as that goes, as far as reselling it, that's nothing really is our concern. I don't think that customer moving to the area would then buy the solar project. Being here, we're, we're creating an energy and the tax taxing entity. That's my thought. Are, are we able to limit it to that? To say, hey, we want the next options. If the schools or hospital wants to speak for the rest of them, just as the city spoke for our share, do we have that right within our agreements to allow them to do that? Well, I I can check on that. I don't think we've ever had a request like that, but I'll certainly. I mean, it's it's your community solar, so. Uh, it does pencil out for residential customers, I think. Again, not having those numbers in front of me. For that, I, with the $50 fee, it works out, I think, about a two year payback period on that six shares per person when you have the sign up fee. Yeah, it's $50 for the sign up fee. Yeah. And so if they got the $5.30, if they got the full six shares and the $5.31 credit, it pencil out in about 10 months. For that, plus your, I think it's about 11 to off that because it's seven some bucks a share correct yeah but the credit that you would actually get oh let me see here yeah let's see well but your bill would figure out i mean do you get the five dollars and 31 cents difference on, um, on that thousand kilowatt hours yeah if i it's just shy of a two-year payback period and then you take it all into account which yep. so it's still it would be a benefit but and then in three not years that big of a benefit per yeah. individual yeah, and if they stay for the in the program for the three years, then they get the fifty dollars back too. So then, but if they 
kick the can in the year they don't get anything and their heirs don't get anything. But it's not it's not owned, it's not they don't have any right, right. to the actual share itself other than a credit on the bill. Correct. As long as they're at that service address. Correct. And so what you want me to find out is whether or not now how do you want to so when when you want the hospitals and the and the those public places to come in, you want that to be when? When if, if nothing else is subscribed, that's no, I would say give them first right of refusal on okay. the remainder of the 224 shares. I would assume between those are probably two of our higher use entities that you were referring to earlier. Um, School will probably gobble up the whole thing. I mean, I'm yeah. sure it has enough energy use to But what are, they limited to, what are we limited to? 10% of our usage is per customer? Is that how you. No, the customer can have up to 100%. A customer. The, yeah, they can have up to 100% of their annual consumption. Okay. Yeah. No, I was thinking you have a couple of industrials that um, could easily take it all. Um, but either one of those two or the hospital is going to do quite a bit. Yeah, the ho you're, you're right. Your hospital is probably going to. So you're thinking school, hospital. Well, yeah, those types okay. would. Okay. That would be my body, so I don't want else on the council. And so I guess if that's the way you'd want to go, then we probably wouldn't, if, if, if they decided, hey, yeah, in between the hospital and the school, they take them all, then we wouldn't need to have an open house or anything like that, and no other community members could be, would be part of it. But again, that's your guys' decision. You're right. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. So the, it, it wouldn't be available for a residential person? Yeah, in, so this, say in this situation, to, yeah. I am too, in general. So just as a side note, the feedback we've heard from the community, a lot of that has been. I'm okay with I'm okay with giving like extra, like any unused shares um, to the you know school or to the hospital. I'm about like giving them first because I mean it sounds like they would use up all the shares, like take all the shares, and there'd be nothing for anybody else to opt into. But At the same time. Get enough interest, you're trying to split 224 shares amongst uh, how many users are oh, yeah. in town. Let's well, say you get 500 people coming and they want to share. What are you going to do? Uh, then the lowest, I assume, is one share, unless you do fractional shares, and then you get 50 cents on it. <laughs> do the Robin Hood method. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no <laughs> fractionalization. <Okay. laughs> so, so, at best, so what happens if we get 500 people that are interested? In well, the first one, first one. Yeah, yeah, first one, first one. We could yeah, spread guess, that benefit over. We could set aside, say, 50 shares to put towards school or hospital or something, and the rest of it would be first come, first serve. We could. And, and yeah, so, there's a benefit for the residents. Or if there's an overwhelming outpouring of interest and desire to have it, you guys can build another one. Right? Yeah. You can have Ainsworth yeah. and Ainsworth, too. Yeah. Then, and if the price continues to drop, you know, your pricing would be even better, probably. So it is just something to think about. You know, the success of one could help, you know, perpetuate other things. I mean, I'm not saying next year, but, you know. I, I, I understand your argument, Vance, but I, personally, I feel like it's sort of been advertised as a community solar project. There is interest from, I've heard interest from community members. We're not administering it, so we're not out nothing, I mean, in terms of time to keep track of who's who's getting the kickbacks and stuff. Sure. So I, just my personal opinion is I'd, I'd like to see others get a shot. I think, yeah, I think it's kind of, well, I, I think it's kind of a community involvement thing, too. You know? exactly. Well, and at this point, that's literally all it is. It's also billed as actual shares, which it's not. Well, you know, yeah. uh, so it, it's not quite what it's billed. I guess I'm just looking at it as really what's going to be the, the net positive for local government taxing entities, which benefits everybody. Well, which is why the city took our full lot, because yeah. we said exactly. it benefits everybody. 
you know, we're talking, you know, six shares, like you said, it's only 37 people. And then you benefit from this. I think those were pretty fast. Yeah, I've had people reach out too. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, I, I think yeah. ideally we have so, for everyone to do as many as they like. Maybe we should put aside some for hospital or, or school or whichever. The hospital isn't a taxing entity. It makes its own money. Okay. It has a it has a bond, bond, bond to pay for the building. But as far as the day to day operation, it's not a taxing entity like the school is. Then yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good distinction, then. especially. You know. Not to say the hospital couldn't use it, but if you're looking at yeah. the tax entity. Well, that's if that's sort of thought. That's a good yeah. distinction to make. You have any idea on how many? shares the school? You know, I don't. I just looked at some of the ones that I knew were your really big consumers. Okay. And, <laughs> uh, but I can certainly look at the school, the hospital, and just see what they would do. And if you guys have any others that you're, you know, wondering about, I can absolutely do that. Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of the best of both worlds to give some shares to the school. But I'd be looking at his courthouse too, probably. Whether a resident gets them or an yeah. entity gets them, it's what do you guys think? John Brad? Any difference? I guess my body is this like we said talked before, uh, six shares and open up the first 37, 38 people that get a share. I think that's kind of why I mean, it'd be different if we if we were talking you know we had you know a couple thousand shares to <laughs> yeah, to right. distribute and stuff like that to where we could say okay but we're you know 224 shares you know we're not very many people are going to benefit from this as far as share point uh, having the array out there to be kind of nice. I think it's a great idea, but. Sell these babies out and then build a bigger one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> go with another one. If more people want. Is that one. limit no longer there? Because yeah, say, it, it initially when cap. it was sold, when we, you could only build a certain size because it was based on a certain percentage of the community's power usage. Is that is that no longer an issue? Well, I don't I don't want to speak out of turn on that. We'd have to check that, but. You know, I know that Scotts Bluff built a second one, and I don't know what their first one was in size relative to their to their consumption. I don't know that. We could we could look and see if that's an option for you. Because didn't you build that? I think you built that first one to ten percent of the usage, yeah. and I think that's what this one was built. What the specs for this one were, right? Right. Because we did ask Pat. I think going to a meeting, he was here. If we could go bigger, and I think the response we got at that time was the policy of the community solar program for energy sure. was just a maximum of 10 percent of the community's usage and that's how it arrived at the 500 kW. And maybe unless I mean if and I don't know if that's the bluff what did that on their own that second one. Then that could be. I'm not sure. But I, I know that you know we when we were looking at the you know we subscribed shares for them and you know the when you're looking at that kind of a price, then they put them together and then it benefited everybody a little bit more. So that was one thing that was nice, but they may have built it smaller or you know, maybe if load increases or that type of thing, if you guys have had an increased load that you know of or something like that too. Refresh my memory, why are we limited to 224? 
because that's what's left over after the city took their maximum amount of shares. Yeah. Yeah. Last meeting we, we voted to keep, I think it was 394 um, shares, which basically covers all of the city's accounts. And that would give us roughly a 280 some dollar a month credit yeah. on our bill. And we thought that that would benefit the community. Oh yeah, because it well, and it sort of depends on the business and the you know, you know, you got the grocery store across the street, the, you know, that you know is different than right. your insurance office building. Right. And then if everybody does their max, that'd be twenty-one, you know, people that can opt in. So. Yeah, I'm thinking if there's the interest you say, we should have a pretty successful open house, and I think we'll probably know that night if. You know how things are for that day whenever you guys want to have it. But I'm sure we'll find out that day. I mean, it could be one of them things where you hear a lot and then nobody comes right. in. I right. hope not. <laughs> but what you need from us tonight is uh, just uh, the direction the council wants to go in terms of whatever limitations. Yep, and then we can get all that ready to go, and then we'll work on a date for the open house, a date, time, all that stuff. I believe that we, um, I mean, we will definitely help with the marketing also, but um, I uh, think GRNE will as well. So we can get all that coordinated and going and see what we end up getting. I'm thinking it's already the middle of July, so, you know, you're pushing into probably August, and so... It'd be nice to know that everything's full up by the time it goes live. Or if it's not, we can make another push. Unless you guys want to do business, which I don't even know if we could, can we do households and business separate um, limits? Like if it's a business, it'd be a limit of 10, 15, or if it's a household, it's a limit of you know, 5 to 10, or something like that. Yeah. Unless you guys want to do that, I just think that 10 sounds like So it passed three to two to limit it to ten shares. I think we got the motion. Did you need anything else, Brittany? I mean, did you want to talk about timing or anything? Or is that <coughs> adequate for? <coughs> That's adequate for now. I can tell you that GRNE is almost about as far as they can go uh, with the things that they're building. We have had a meeting with our internal NPPD folks and GRNE. They will be, our folks will be doing the work behind the meter, so um, on, the dis on the distribution side of things. So we have, the construction plan is getting set for that, and we will be up to do that soon. And 
the last I heard, it was a September at the very latest October, mid-October timeframe. Naturally, there's some material that they're having a couple problems getting, but so, yeah, so they're waiting on that, and if that's the holdup, they're hoping for that. You know, at the very latest October, they, they don't want to push into November if they can at all help it, of course, but uh, sooner the better. So that's where we're at with the project. Everything seems to be going real well. I don't know if you've had a chance to go out and tour it or see it or anything, but he tells me if he's ever in the area, he's going to let me know so that we can all go together. But I don't know. I haven't heard from him yet just in the meetings we're on, and, but I, everything seems to be going real well. So. Yeah, I visited the second floor. Anybody have any other questions for Brittany? Or shall we move on to the next item? All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I Get out of your hair. I don't think I'll have anything else to contribute. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, absolutely. It's nice to see everyone again. Okay, next item, I think we will move to a discussion of procedures for implementing the detour route. Uh, Dan Spears here. I wanted to address the council. A lot of the information I have is, is anecdotal, so if I get this wrong, please please correct me. I understand at one time the detour route was 1st Street to Pine Street, and that intersection was rejected because of damage to a, a landowner's property. I don't know if that's accurate or not. That's the story I keep hearing. That intersection measures, 1st Street measures basically the same from east to west with the exception of the business district. It widens between Woodward and Walnut. Other than that, it's basically 32 feet wide. So the intersection at East First Street, at Pine Street is 32 feet. The intersection at Osborne Street is 32 feet as well. Pine Street is actually wider than Osborne Street. But like I said, my understanding is that was the detour route that was tried at one time and rejected because of damage. I'm not sure that's accurate. Uh, if someone wants to tell me that's incorrect, I'll, I'll certainly hear it. But my concern then is, how is the other intersection better than the intersection that was rejected? But that's not the biggest of my concerns. Um, that's a relatively low traffic area. Traffic counts are going to be down there. My concern is the intersection of Osborne Street and Highway 20. It's right now that the narrowest part of Highway 20 in the city. It's scheduled to be widened maybe next year, maybe two years. I don't know when the bids are going to be let and if the bids are going to be accepted. It's probably in one of the higher speed areas of town. The speed limit doesn't change until just before Osborne Street. It's still 45 miles an hour at Wilson. I understand the city's considering purchasing driver awareness signs. I'm sure you recognize maybe the speeds are excessive where the speed limit changes. Not necessarily everyone's going to slow down at that time. Uh, it's arguably has the least visibility of any intersection in town. There's only one appreciable elevation change in the entire city, and that's, of course, between Wilson Street and Osborne Street. There's approximately 10 feet of drop there. At Osborne Street, at that intersection, uh, to look to either the east or the west, the street level is actually below the level of people's yards. And then you have the houses on both corners limiting visibility. If, if I'm accurate, and if, if you did reject the other intersection because of the width, if you want a truck to stay in its lane at that intersection to turn south, basically you have 20 feet. If someone's at that intersection, you have 18 feet to turn into, which isn't sufficient to turn a tractor trailer. And you're going to leave someone sitting out there on Highway 20. If you force the truck to go into the opposing lane to make the turn, uh, and then you can certainly do that, but my question is going to be is at what point does the city want to accept liability for that by establishing a detour route that's insufficient to turn a tractor trailer in? I can't tell you what dimensions it requires to turn a truck. If you've ever watched trucks turn off of 7 to 20, that intersection is approximately 70 feet wide, and there are a lot of trucks making the right-hand turn there from, from essentially the center lane which would equate to turning from uh, essentially in front of that, the, 
the house in the wrong lane to turn onto 20. Highway 20 is approximately 50 feet wide there, approximately 40 at Osborne. Again, I can't tell you what dimensions it takes to turn a truck, but I'm here asking the city council to retain an expert to get an opinion on what size of intersection you need to have to turn a tractor trailer in. I understand the city wanting to have a detour inside the city limits as opposed to running 877 to Pine. I understand you wanting to do that. My question is, do you have a detour route inside the city limits that supports two-way truck traffic? I don't know that you do. I don't know that I'm wrong, but I would ask you to, to retain an expert to find out. Okay, well, we, uh, we certainly do, we can do that and we will. Uh, you know, we, when we set up the detour, we went to the county sheriff. Uh, we felt that was the appropriate channel, worked with them to decide, look at the options, and they looked at, you know, all the options that have been used, I think, in the last two or three years. And that was the recommendation, that's what we went with. Probably no detour is perfect, uh, but that was the best best choice we felt at that time, and that's what we went with. Uh, but we'll certainly, I, I stopped to see Mark Bovar the other day, that he's out of town, but I mean, I don't know when our next detour will be, it might not be for a year. <laughs> well, it so might we, not be. We certainly have some time to investigate that, and we will, and, and try to come up with. Well, it's possibly even two years, I'm not sure. They're going to let the bid this year. I'm not sure what you're going to do next year if they start the construction and limit roads with width to, to two lanes through town. I don't know that you're going to find a detour to put a tractor trailer on. Yeah. But that depends on if the bids get approved this year and when they start construction. But, uh, you know, I appreciate your concerns. And, uh, yeah, everybody's worried about safety, liability, and they all go together. Uh, and so we'll... Uh, We've got a little more awareness of that now as we move forward, <laughs> thanks to you. And I don't know if anybody has questions for Dan or if you have any other comments. No, that's my only request. I think looking at when they put it on that, to me it almost highlights another one of our needs that I think probably got put on the board partially because of the concrete street that's there. Yeah. Um, which handles the traffic well. To me, really, that's we need to be looking at where can we enhance our concrete streets prioritize those routes that might be our good either emergency routes, detour routes, really both. Um, like you said, that, that first to Pine, it's a little longer than the route down your street, but mm -hmm. to me it's a little more natural where it's already, if I understand, it's no parking on both of those, correct? If you take for, from Maine to Pine on first street is no parking. And Pine and on first went. You and 877 went to Pine. Yeah. So I, I can't validate your story about First Street because that was before my time, but uh, 877 always went to Pine, and, and, and so yeah, there's always no parking all yeah. the time. It, so as far as dealing with that and people being used to it, or this last time around we came up and there's no parking signs all of a sudden, it, it is an adjustment for the residents on the streets. Really, I think that's like, part of our issue too is, in, like you said, infrastructure as far as having the the width right, but having the material right on the road as well. The yeah, first street definitely needs to be redone. I mean, that's such a high travel street, and that's another thing we have to yeah, we have to consider doing something with, and it definitely needs to be concrete. If that was concrete, then that would be ideal. That would be the ideal detour yeah. for a good keep us inside the city limits. But are you willing to widen Pine Street or First Street from? What to we'll to have to look at and have it engineered on what we can do and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's my question is how wide does the intersection have to be to yeah. support two way truck traffic? And I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, that's something we'll have to do when we um, discuss our paving districts and stuff like that and, and get that passed. And that's going to take a couple years to. As I said, paving, paving district that they're set up would be an engineering project. So and some of that would be addressed in that. I assume too, it's a little less. Uh, what's the word? Cumbersome to have vehicles waiting over there than on your intersection at Fourth Highway 20 in Osborne. Because, like I said, with that hill, visibility is low, and if you've got a truck waiting on the highway to pull in, uh, it's going to be a higher traffic area too. Where if you have to wait, that's yes. not an ideal spot. Um, so. Well, thanks.
Thank you. This will maybe go back up to the top now. Spectrum in order. Uh, let's discuss and consider approval of a manager application for liquor license for Elks PGO number 1790. So that information should be in your packet, um, kind of similar to the SDL and the other approvals for liquor licenses. The commission is just looking for a local recommendation or approval for this change. Um, we already have a liquor license established, so again, it's just renaming who the manager of that license is. License of a manager application with the license for Alex 1790. Second. Move and second. Any other discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Yes. Sean? Aye. Skyler? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carried unanimously. Next, uh, Greg's here. Wanted to discuss. Uh, Request for permission to place a well on the southeast corner of the solar array track for the proposed fishing pond in town. Right? Yeah, what thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, so initially, are you guys familiar with where we're looking at to put in a community fishing pond? It would be west of the soccer field and the solar array, east of the hospital in that open area. So we've got a two and three quarter acre uh, community fishing pond on county ground. We're planning counties agreed to allow us to, to construct it there. Initially, we were hoping to put a well just south of the pond on county ground. Uh, we've got some logistical issues there. We've got to be a thousand feet away, non-negotiable from city wells. And there is a city well east of the swimming pool, so kind of in that little access alley that runs between the pool and those houses by the water tower. There's a city wellhead right in that area just east of the pool, a little well house. And so we've got to be a thousand feet away from that. Well, we could do that and put it on the south end of the south side of the, where the pond's going to go. Obviously, our uh, piping would have been very minimal there. The issue we had was there is a center pivot located just across the cowboy trail on the next property to the south. Uh, there's also a rule you've got to be 600 feet from another domestic well, but you could get a waiver for that. So initially we tried to work with that property owner on a waiver. Uh, that well, the irrigation well is 400 feet deep. The well we were proposing is a 50 gallon a minute small well at 80 feet deep in a different aquifer. The well driller you know, tried to make that point. But at the end of the day, we did not get cooperation on a waiver for that site. So that's why I'm coming to you guys tonight, working with Andy Glidden from the Game and Parks, and he's, he uses like, kind of like Google Earth and you can map out distances. So what we found is an alternative. It'll require a little bit more expense on our end because we'll have to do a little, we'll have to pipe the water a little bit, but if you've got in your packet that aerial map um, basically is our proposed site. So that aerial map doesn't have the current solar array construction, but our proposal would be uh, to use the very southeast corner of what would be East City Park, right where those two, in, inside where those two trails come together, the Cowboy Trail, and then there's a little offshoot that goes uh, to the north. In that corner down there, we've got a site that would meet all requirements as far as distances from any existing wells. It meets the 1,000-foot requirement for the city well, as well as the 600-foot requirement is far enough away from any other existing wells. Uh, you see if there's little dots on the map of the other two existing wells that, that will, and the distances will be away. So what we would propose is to, is to do the well there and then we would pipe the water along the south end, right kind of inside the fence line there uh, where there, you know, with the solar array, there's not going to be any other development <coughs> that could really happen in that small little amount of ground. And then we would just pipe the walk, pipe the pipe the well into the to the pond there, so we'd have uh, water access when we need to fill. So that would be our proposal. But of course, that's city-owned ground, so that's why I'm, I'm coming to you tonight to see if the, if the council is willing to allow us to move forward with that site for a well. Uh, I look at your picture here, Greg. Um, I see your pinpoint there. He says swimming pool is not correct. 
Oh, is it? That, well, Andy, Andy Glenn made so that. I wonder if that's going to be where it's, where it's, it, it's along the alley. It's right here. It's along that alley, right? Yeah, there. it's right by that alley. Where did he have the? We were at the shelter, at the picket shelter, just east. So I don't know how much. There's a distance. There. A little bit. He where where that site is on the southeast corner. We're well outside it. Okay. We're well outside. We have to be what in a domestic well would we have to be? Six hundred feet. From the domestic, from domestic well, so, so they're city, a, city thousand, well. a thousand feet from the city well. Because you have 265 feet, and I think you're probably still within that. Yeah, I think we're okay. I would think, I would think, think you would know that over. Yeah, I'm assuming it's just a little. Yeah. Right. I guess I didn't recognize yeah, that he well right. mis pinpointed where he had the well. We we. I didn't miss it. Yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't look at it closely enough. I just looked at where he had it because it's it's really hard to see. It's just to the east of that little well house. Yeah. If you can see that well house, I guess I didn't see where he had his little dot put on the. He's at the picnic shelter, farther north. Then. The yeah. For okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I think we're still okay. Okay. That side. Yeah. The other side I actually kind of looked at initially was between that last ball field and the solar array, right in that corner to the east, kind of follow along the line of the milled road there, and the far eastern end of that looked like a good route. Um, then we could just pipe straight down the, the milled trail road un underneath or wherever and pipe it in that way, but it just seemed to work easier just to go to the far south end of the property on the east side. I think if you got, if you want um, north with your well and then come back south with your pinpoint, I that might be close. He, he, Andy said it was going to be very close. Be very close. Yeah, he said it was going to be very close at yeah. that site, so we thought for just to be sure we we go to that southeast corner. So, so the, county, the county owns the land to the west of there? The county owns the land. The county basically sold the city the land that the solar array is on now. The county owns the land um, between the hospital and where the solar array and those ball fields are. Did you guys consider putting the well to the west of the, of the pond? We, we run into being too close to other wells, yeah. yeah. So uh, if this well was placed on, on this area where you want to go, mm -hmm. That would be owned then by the city, or well, my my thought would be if if the city down the road would be willing to pay the or to to handle the minimal whatever the cost would be of uh, the electricity. Uh, our plan is we would pay you know the city would would incur no cost as far as the construction or any of that. I would probably come to the council at a later point to ask to see if this if the city would be willing to handle just the electrical usage that the well generates. As opposed, otherwise it would be a lion. It would be the Lions Club that would probably uh, have to handle the, the cost of electricity. And is, then it, is the Lions Club the one that's the, organizing this deal? The Lions Club has agreed to be the organizing sponsor. Uh, it initially started when my father passed. We were looking at things to do with some memorials and, and thought something that maybe had would have a little last, more lasting impact. So our family put in. Uh, I heard people suggested. Uh, yeah, committed the first five thousand in uh, memorials and. And the state money toward it, and then we'll we'll look. We've got some other funding options. We're looking. Two into. more things. Looking in the future, is there any chance that the city would want or need to put in an, another well, possibly in that area? And then, secondly, they was talking tonight about needing possibly additional land for another solar array. Is there still, after this is built, still room for possibly another city well out there or another solar? array looking 10, 20 years down in the future, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't know on the well standpoint. There's gonna be, there's gonna still be a pretty good batch of ground between the hospital and where the pond will be. We, we kind of stay toward the east side of that property thinking if the hospital long-term ever wanted to have any kind of future expansion, they would have, that was kind of the, I think that's originally why the county kept a hold of that. It was like, well, if the hospital ever needs to expand or do anything there, so I, your thinking is if the hospital's ever going to do something, it would, they would want to be close to kind of where their parking lot is. So we thought, well, to do this, we would utilize the eastern portion of that county ground. And uh, so as far as the solar array goes, I mean, I don't know that there's anything. I mean, it, it's all county owned there. It's not city owned. If you put the pond where you're proposed putting the pond, we added the solar array. We could add it to the existing one because you're right yeah, next to correct. it. Correct. Right yeah. next to the solar array. With the yeah, but yeah, and we're on county ground. And you're on county yeah. ground. Yeah. 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 Um, how big a motor are you going to do you know? It's a small pump. It's 50 gallon a minute is the maximum you'd have for that. Um, so I, you know, I, Tony, I don't know. He didn't, he's not here. I, if yeah. you want 
talk to Tony on some of the particulars. I'm curious about how much. Yeah, just a small. I don't. You know, I, I was going to try to see if I could find some estimates on what. I just don't. It's really only. It's going to pump in the summer for the most part. You know, maybe a little initial filling in the spring, and I don't see it really being used in the winter. Yeah, if you said that, well, the water level. It won't self feed itself. It's gonna right. There's no it's gonna, there's no source. So right. it's gonna be 100 percent from this well. All the water's gonna come from this well. Yeah. So ideally, what we're looking to do is, uh, as you see, there's different colors on that uh, on that map. So the center portion, they've got it, what they're looking at doing is try to get it to at least 12 feet deep. My proposal to them is we're gonna try to go deeper and get into the water table, where it's in the deepest portion. Because anything that we don't dig deep enough to get into the water table there, then we're going to have to bring in like a clay material, you know, bentonite or something to line once we've done our excavation. That way, once we, we put that clay liner in uh, to keep it from basically seeping, because it's going to be sandy, gravelly once you get down past the first three, four feet. Of, yeah, you'd be running. You'd be, yeah, you'd just be constantly running it. But if we can dig down into the water table, which uh, Tony thought was probably around 20 feet. You know, obviously you're gonna have some slope to get to the water surface. You're not gonna have water right up to the ground level. You're gonna slope it down before you get to water level. Then we're looking at 14, 12 to 14 feet from the water level where I'm thinking we'll be able to get down into uh, the groundwater. So the, that saves us some bentonite material that we won't have to use to, to seal but then for those shallower areas there where it, where it comes up shallower, we will have it sealed with that material that will hold that water better than, than just what's Does there the naturally. Does the county propose that they would continue to own this then? Yes, the county, no, the, county is, the county will maintain ownership of the site. Uh, the Lions Club is basically the sponsoring organization as far as uh, when we apply for grants or there's a game of Parks Grant will be applying for. That needs to be a political subdivision, so the county's agreed to let us apply on the county's behalf for that one. Uh, some of the other applications, if we make them, will be toward, uh, on behalf of the Lions Club. They're the, they're the sponsoring organization for it, and they've agreed to help kind of maintain it. Uh, but need, you know, any kind of ongoing maintenance, the Lions Club uh, has agreed to help. The NRD is uh, wanting to get involved to put some landscaping in, trees, shrubs, some of the native things and turn it, have an educational component kind of with it. So if you've got a little perimeter around it that, uh, to kind of spruce it up, uh, the county would like a picnic shelter added. So the, we're looking at that maybe on the, on the north side. Uh, but again, like I said, this is all on county ground, but they, their request was that we look at trying to use a, a picnic shelter there for people to utilize and uh, then the other would be a, an accessible pier for for people to, to so you didn't have to get down the water level or you know if you if they had act issues with trying to walk on s steeper slopes or not not steep but they had any access issues they would have a, a dock that goes out a pier that goes out into the water where they could they yeah. can utilize that. You've seen that in a lot of community ponds. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing. Well, well parking or anything like, like that, that's all about it. Yeah, parking typically, I mean, you've got, you've got that existing milled little yeah. street, which, I'm, you know, by the time they're hauling a lot of material out of there, that, that little milled street could get beat up a little bit. I'm not going to lie, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of material that's got to move off of there, so that's, that's one of the logistics. Uh, county is willing to, the County Roads Department is willing to do a lot of the excavation uh, without charge, and uh, well drillers offered to put in the labor as an in-kind donation. So, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of places are getting behind it. I've had several requests from other organizations that want to kind of be involved to help. But I'm, I'm at the point now, just I, I can't move forward unless I know I've got a water source where it doesn't have any natural source to feed it. And our, like I said, our first option was denied, so that's why we're looking at, at this as our, as our option for the well. Is it already settled that you're gonna probably use bentonite or not? Well, just some kind of material. I, I leave that to the people that are smarter than me on what works the best to seal those. So it's gaming parks and, you know, your, your Bruce Gannett or whoever, whatever. I use bentonite a lot on bottomless tanks and pastures. And I can tell you it's a continuous process. You don't bentonite at once. You bet night at every year, every year over yeah. and over. Well, we'd, we'd, we'd certainly look to something that would be more, you know, more long term than that because you and would take, take truckloads. Oh, yeah. Do that. Oh, yeah, it will. And there's no doubt. It's, it will it's a lot of, it's a big, it's a big project. 
So. And then you've got a gooey mass that you're dealing with that's absolutely sticky and gooey. It's, it's worse than any clay material. But it, it is a clay, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, it, it's whatever. To me, it's whatever the game and park. The game and parks has done numerous of these, and they've had success in a lot of communities. Basically, the reason we, we settled on this site was we wanted a site that was accessible for kids that they wouldn't be having to be out on the highway. Even like as, when we were kids, we could take the bikes out north of town a mile and you had some ponds that were accessible. But now with the traffic on Meadville Avenue and the trucks and things, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want kids necessarily riding bikes out on Meadville Avenue all the time. So this was something that's close to the Cowboy Trail, close to the park, don't have any real major traffic issues for kids to be able to to access it and so that's why we settled on on the site we settled on. If we were to deny the proposal do you guys have like a next option? I don't know uh, not to I don't know that there's any other options than than where we're proposing that would be outside that thousand foot limit for the city well because otherwise we get too close within 600 feet of that center pivot that we won't get, we, that we won't get a waiver from. So, Tony, has he or somebody looked at that in terms of drilling the well there and with the solar stuff not interfering? Uh, there's room there to do. Yeah, that. he's looked at. I mean, he's he said he didn't have any issues with that site when I talked to him. So, for parking, you just have to put up a bike rack, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be ideal. So. But anyway, that's kind of that's kind of where we're trying to move forward. But before I apply for grants and do that, I'd, I'd like to have that that water source settled on where we'll, we'll be able to fill it when it needs it. So the last thing we want is to do all that work and then first winter we get a winter kill because we didn't have enough water in it to to sustain. So, so random kind of unrelated question, but we're looking at access. As we've kind of been talking about that, are you getting toward the trail? I don't know if is there something where you're going to basically have an entry from the trail at that point if they're riding bikes on the trail? Where they yeah, my, my thinking was you would try to, you know, have some kind some of sort of pathway. And it, yeah, some kind of pathway, whether it's whether it's accessing the existing trail on the east end of the park and coming up to that little access, that little mill road, and coming in that way, or obviously from the town side, you can come in using the, the trail road there. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's. I think we're gonna we're gonna try to put some kind of maybe little just whether it's mulch or whether it's just something to where there's walking access around it and then down to the water's edge basically try to keep some kind of maintained access points that, that aren't gonna be growing up with vegetation and those types of things. And like I said, Lions Clubs agreed to kind of help with some of the ongoing maintenance at the site. So we won't be asking JC to take on any more any more out there. You were you're on that? Yeah, you were on that meeting. I, would, I guess I think it's a positive project. It's good to see something added to the park and something neat for the community. I would, I guess we probably talked enough, I would move that we grant permission to move forward with the installation of the well at the proposed site at the southeast corner of the solar array. I'd like to note too, I think Lisa mentioned this earlier, that, um, We'll have to approve this again later when they apply for a for a well, yeah. 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 This was just preliminarily. This is not a site acquisition, mm -hmm. and then later on, there's drilling wells. It's something to remember. Yeah. Fill out the permit, and that'll come back before the city council. We'll have more details about the exact. Exactly. Yep. I'll okay. second it. So we got a motion and a second to allow that. Any other discussion? Call roll. Sean? Aye. Skyler? Aye. Vance? Aye. Brad? Yes. <coughs> Thanks, folks. Thank you for your report. Thanks. Uh, just to, the hospital has gone out for bids to hay that this year after that's done. I think the county is interested in uh, <coughs> starting to take some material out as, you know, instead of hauling it, dumping it, having to pick it up, haul it again. If they've got projects where they're needing it, they're, they may start. They may start hauling some as needed to different projects. So you may start. I'm, I'm double checking to make sure that doesn't affect anything with our grant applications. You know, some of those grant applications. Oh, you've started any work? 
but this where there won't be any charge or cost being paid out, I don't see it'll be an issue. But after that pay contract is is up with the hospital, the, the county's indicated they may start working on it, you know, a little bit at a time early while they can use the material and then when they're in more of a downtime is when you'll see more more activity. So that's where we're at. But thank you for that. I appreciate it. That'll help us kind of at least get things locked down and and know how we're going to move forward. So appreciate it. A lot of pieces to yep. the there are. Right now. Yep. All right, move on to the next item is consider resolution number 2108 to adopt the Region 24 Emergency Management Agency Multi Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan 2021. That's a mouthful. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Region 24 had gotten a grant um, and had, had selected JEO to do this plan. It was a multi county plan. Um, so, the, the information gathering and, and the bread was part of it for fire. Um, it's been going on for probably a year or better. I know that. Pretty extensive plan. I think it covers a lot of base work that I wasn't part of in a lot of the meetings that they had and stuff like that, and conference calls and stuff. And, uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. It needs to be updated. It did. Uh, yeah, it did need to be updated. So. Well, like I said, there's so many things that you have to have a plan in place just to be eligible for certain things. Yeah, nice that's, that's, that's covered that part of it. That's not yeah. to say, I mean, the alternative is to make our own plan, right? So, yeah. well, we do always have so much overlap anyway between city and county, just share resources, you know, local agreements and things. So, it makes sense that you have a multi jurisdictional plan. I'd move to um, adopt resolution 21 08. Region 24 Emergency Management Agency Multi Jurisdictional Hazard Mitigation Plan 2021. It's in its entirety. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second. Move to the second. Any discussion? Do you have any input or takes? No, no just in speaking with Pearl Eimler at NEMA, it's, you've already paid for it, it's already done. It's something that we can use and have that continuity going forward. So. Call the roll. Skyler. Aye. Vance. Aye. Brad. Yes. Sean. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. All right. Next item is to consider resolution number 21-09 to close the West Plains Bank account ending the number of the economic development reviews. Any remaining interest to be transferred into West Plains Bank account ending the number 8223 community development. Block grant housing. I think this is basically housekeeping. Or? Yeah, this is. Everybody's probably kind of tired of hearing me talk about this repurposing. It's been, <laughs> it's been a lot of work, um, a lot of paperwork. Uh, it, 
the end of the day, the repurposing is completed. Um, all the proper documentation has been submitted to the EDD on that. And we're um, to go ahead and go ahead and roll those phones together. So you'll notice on the folder of your folder, actually, you can kind of see where we have transferred the, the, the bulk of the fund. Resolutions basically giving me permission to contact the bank and authorizing them to close the account, transfer the interest, and if anything needs to be signed or documented, that I have the authority to go ahead and do that on behalf of this action. I move to approve resolution 21 9 on the closed West Bank Bank account and meeting. Second, any other discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Skyler? James? Aye. Yes. Sean? Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Our next, I think one of these next three items, all kind of related. They are all related, yes. Um, it's a little bit of repetition, unfortunately. So we, we kind of have already done this. April. Um, this is tied to our wastewater project, our interim construction financing. We took out sewer bond anticipation notes. Um, so there were three, three notes that were taken to help finance the construction. Uh, we had in April set a closing date for our USDA loan, which when we closed the loan, it would, the USDA would essentially pay off our notes. That date was set for May 18th. So under the, the rule of giving 30-day notice to the band holder before you pay it off. Uh, so we passed these resolutions basically in April to close in May. USDA delayed the closing. Um, now the new date is August 17th to close. So uh, in accordance with the rules and regulations, That's what we're accomplishing here with these resolutions, um, is to give them notice so that we can now do the closing on August 17th. So it's a little bit of a formality and a repeat. Do you all remember doing that, Nate? Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to have the <coughs> low interest rates from the USDA process is pretty I'll make a motion to consider approval of resolution 21-10 calling two of water utility bond application notes series 2019 dated July 9th, 2019 in the principal amount of $200,000. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All roll. Vance. Brad, yes. Sean, Skyler. Motion carried unanimously. Now these next two are I mean, essentially the same, they're different notes, so different payoff amounts. But they're all they're all the same. I move that we approve resolution. 
Resolution 21-11 calling Sewer Utility Bond Anticipation Notes Series 2020B dated August 19, 2020 in the principal amount of $1,010,000. Second. Motion is second in discussion. Call roll. Brad. Yes. Sean. Aye. Skyler. Aye. Van. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Now who's Ken? There is Sean. I'll make a motion to consider approval of resolution 2112 calling sewer utility bond application note series 2020 dated June 17, 2020 in the principal amount of $250,000. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Call roll. Sean. Aye. Skyler. Aye. Dan. Aye. Brown. Yes. So that's one Four six million total. Is that what your loan to USDA will be then? It's basically? actually one point two seven six or one point two seven. Um, the CDBG reimbursements pay okay. for that for the rest of that. So about one point two seven million will be the yeah, note sorry, to USDA. I, Doesn't you, you think I repeated that number and that's how that number is? I mean I and that's over how long? Is that a 30 year term? 20 year term? Uh, it is a 40, 40 year term. I think it was 2% for 40 years. And debt service uh, will help offset that cost. Right. Yeah. By say offset, does that mean you're going to pay? You can pay extra on it to close it out earlier if we you could potentially, depending on where our other debt ratio is. We have, yeah. we have some debt coming off. That could be an option, but I know we've talked about paving districts and a lot, <laughs> and a lot of other things. So, okay. but debt service. Is a long -term. Yeah. Okay. Debt service as a fund, you know, can be geared towards long term debt. So. The difference between the 1.27 and the 1.45 is uh, Well, CDBG works on a reimbursement, and all of our expenses came at the same time. We didn't think. Safely, we could float that. So we took out an additional for the construction, knowing that we would be reimbursed, and we have been reimbursed CDBG. So as soon as we close the note, we will use those CDBG reimbursements to pay that excess now. All right. Next item is uh, consider resolution number 21 dash. One three regarding the alarm renewal coverage proposal for the 2021 pool year. So we do this every year, and it's the same. And it's always a little bit confusing. Um, they they offer you a couple of different options with their proposals, and it all has to do with whether or not you want to go out for bids. Essentially, it's a commitment so that they know how much notice you have to give them if you are going to go out for bid. Um, so if you're willing to uh, commit to them and say you're not going to go out for bid for, for three years, they'll give you a 5% discount. Two years is a 4% discount. 180 days, 2%. 90 days, 2%. And then it goes all the way down to a 90 day notice where you get no discount. So you can take the 5% discount every year, even though that's confusing. Um, because last year we took a 5% discount for three years. So you would think that it would go to two year and then to one year, but that's not actually how it works. If you're, gonna, if you're not intending to go off the bid and say three years from today, you can't take the 5% discount. So I can tell you in the I think six years that I've been at the city office, we've taken the 5% discount every year. And so really the consideration is does the city intend or want to go out for bed at any point in the next two to three years. So if I understand, so based off last year's, are we then basically locked in already for another two years? Is the basically sort of extend our locked in for one well, year? Well, common sense would say that, and I think that's why it's confusing. Um, but that's not actually how they do it. Okay. <laughs> 
that's kind of why I attached the letter and the packet because I think it's a common question the alarm receives because it is actually uh, they, they do actually kind of explain it, but it doesn't common sense doesn't doesn't really explain it. Um, but if if you're not intending or wanting to seek bids, you can take the five percent. So the total renewal price, I guess, I, and I know you guys have that as well, but um, so the total annual contribution, 94596 If you took the 5% discount, the total would be 89865 And of course it goes down. That's the one. That's the one-year price, though, right? Not that's the just for the upcoming 21-22. Yes. Not the full three years. That's just. The that's okay. right. Okay. Just kind of so, one more price. So we don't intend to seek bids, but two years from now we decide. Oh, we're going to get bids. We have to give 180 days. We have to give that money back. We have to give 180 days. No. We don't have to give money back. We have to give 180 days. Even though we're locked in for three years, we can still six months. six months we can tell what the bottom so what can be noticed and then in what point we don't give them. And I think the, the, the point is I understand it from Lauren's perspective is uh, it's kinda like NPBD and, and the other utilities when they come out and you sign your agreements and they want them twenty five years out, you know, it's more of a commitment that they can invest in, in these other things because they know they're gonna have that revenue coming in they're expecting. Uh, it's kind of like a guarantee to them, I think. Um, it's not set in stone, but it kind of gives them uh, an idea. So after um, we could agree to this 5%, and then a year from now, we could actually go off and bid to somebody else if we gave them 180 days notice ahead of time. And then next year, in the 22 23 year, we could actually have somebody else do it on our insurance. And you with, could no, go, with no penalty. And you could alarm. go out for bid and, and still set up alarm, too. I mean, it's. Yeah. That's how it works. I think we've been happy with Walmart. We've been uh, yeah. fulfilling our needs. I'm need kind of interesting, interested to see how this plan's going to go for June 4. But everything today, has, I don't have anything negative to say about Walmart. Um, Their legwork and stuff, as far as we can tell them what's going on, and yep. they know the legwork. They've been really good to work with. They're very friendly. They're communicative. They I didn't go back to last year's packet. Did the price go up? It did. Much. Yeah, like three percent. Three to five percent. I can't remember. Well, it was our discount. Between, <laughs> between, yeah, between work comp and, and general liability, one was three and one was five. And that's that's the story of insurance. I think I just got our health insurance. Right If we did put up a bid, how many bidders do you think we'd even get? I don't know. I, I can honestly say in the six years I've been here, we have not gone out for a bid. We, we maintained our relationship with Mark. So I, I couldn't even tell you what's I think happened. I remember once that they, that they maybe bid it, said it was, I think it wasn't even comparable. One of the mm -hmm. agencies they used, couldn't they used find to, anybody to quote it. Be, before the alarm started, not all arms, but larms, they used to be with money. And was one of them that and it when when this started they the local agents couldn't compete. You would think, I mean it's a cool Yeah, they can so many so many cities and stuff and then the dollar they they can definitely say I know they're a low independent person it'd be awful tough to compete with something like this. I know there are cities that don't most of those are the larger cities, Lincoln, Omaha, Grand Island. I know North Platte participates in more. But most of the good size, second class cities, and villages all participate in more. So that's certainly something we can do if, if you would like us to, but yeah. We've had no problems with Marmos since I've been in the office. I've been pretty good to work with. You mean to save for the three year? I think yes, 
yes or whatever motion should indicate which option you would like to select. Well, I move that we approve resolution 21 13 um, renewing the alarm proposal for 21, 2021 2022 year um, at the three year 5% discount. Second. Moving second, any other discussion? Law enforcement liability. You contract with the county. Why do you have to do your own insurance? Uh, and that's probably maybe that's a legal question. My understanding was always that state statute, the city has an obligation to law enforcement within its jurisdictional boundaries, whether the city has its own department or not. We have certain liabilities. And so even though we contract with the county, we still have to carry liability insurance. So if it's the department acting as your police force that happens inside city limits, it's your insurance potentially instead that of the has county's? Been my Is that that has been my Maybe if it happens inside your jurisdiction, your city limits, the, the, any claim would be against the city's insurance as opposed to the county's? It's just an additional coverage for the city. I mean, it, it, yeah. double it, on there, but it's still, I, yeah, yeah. It's not that. You know, you're $20, $20 you're double, a year. You're double, double, double insuring. Yeah. Double insurance would be the long pay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We've been lucky and we haven't had to, haven't, haven't had to use it, I guess. Isn't that the way of the insurance? You pay for it hoping you never have to use it. So. Yeah. And that's why I said I'll be, I'll be interested to see how this kind of uh, cost and agreement so forth comes out like it should. Any other discussion? There's a motion on the floor. Motion in the second. Yeah. Go ahead and call the roll. Sean. Aye. Skyler. Aye. Vance. Aye. Brad. Yeah. Motion carries unanimously. Anybody right. remember Brittany's name with NPPD so I don't have to go back to last month's council story? Right. That's not Kenny. a spirit. Kenny. Kenny. That's a spirit. All right. I should keep your card. Lisa's report. I know she did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the biggest thing I suppose to report, we, we received the first half of the American Rescue Plan Act uh, fund that is coming in two installments. So the first installment was $143,360.07. The second installment will come in supposedly 12 months from now. Um, there are conditions on uh, what that money can and cannot be used for, so, um, and it does need to be separated. The webinars that I sat in on is, you know, if it's in an interest-bearing account and it garners interest, the interest has to be uh, spent towards the same requirements as the rest of the money, and so therefore it really shouldn't sit in the general account, so uh, we've got it sitting in the the grant account, um, which is kind of our catch-all for those kinds of federal dollars that have to be separated out. Um, so for now, it'll just kind of hang there. We'll talk about it during the budget workshops, what all of our different options are that potentially we could spend that money on next year. I think your funds have, your projects have to be obligated um, by end of calendar year 2024 and then you actually have to spend it down by end of calendar year 2026 and then we've got some annual reporting requirements that we have to do um, on those funds documentation that we have to keep just like any other federal money that we get so um, we'll be talking about that a lot more here in about a month i attended the finance conference um, it was Webin virtual, so it was through webinar for two weeks, a couple hours every day. And it was good information, solid information. Um, the state legislature has required that uh, municipal treasurers have continuing education hours, and so this counts for that now. So I'll submit those hours to the state auditor's office so that we'll be in compliance with that. <coughs> 
starting the budget process now, so all the department heads have been given their information that they need to go through their budgeting process, and so we'll do the workshops <coughs> again like we've done in years past, or probably in mid-August when we get the valuations from the county and kind of know what the level looks like and what our expenditures are going to be. And you guys can go through those drafts for you guys that are here. Budget um, and changes, comments, or whatever we need to do to tweak it uh, to get it ready for the, the public hearing where we formally present the budget then to the community and advertise it. So that will all be coming as well here shortly. Uh, Mary talked about subcommittees kind of needing to get together. TV broadband subcommittee did meet once here a while back and we kind of hammered out some work but I think we need to sit down and visit some more but looks like we're probably pretty close to having something ready to go there and front desk is in full swing we've been pretty busy in the office we initially signed up for I think 300 licenses or users and we've got 250 today so Some bugs as with any new process, but we're getting it worked out. I think it's going to be a good thing. And otherwise, it's just been a lot of the kind of quarterly stuff and quarterly reports to all of our places that we do that to. And Session to discuss personnel briefly if you guys would like to. Someone wants to. You guys have to move that. I'll make a motion with my executive session to discuss personnel. Second. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys have a good night. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's allowed in the executive session. <laughs>